Hello, this is Steve Cowles with AEM Test. I'm here to talk about some new accessories for your network service assistant, also known as the NSA. You see here, I have my NSA sitting on my table. I've got my original remote terminator that came with the unit, which some of you may or may not be aware that the remote terminator has ID number one. This is the original that came with the unit. And these are part of our advanced link identification system. So what does advanced link identification mean? Well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to go ahead and plug my remote terminator in. I'm going to go ahead and select Certilite on my testing. And then when I plug this cable that comes from the NSA into the other port that corresponds to the other end of that link, I can see immediately I show remote ID number one, and I see a wire map. Live wire map is part of what we get in the NSA. But we can also run the auto test. And these auto tests comply with the TIA 1152A test limits. So you're going to see the same type of parameters that you would see in a full-blown certification test. I'll go ahead and run the test now. And you can see here that the test passed. We get details you'd expect to see in a certifier. This is the difference with the Certilite testing technology built into the NSA as compared to most qualifiers. This is why we call it Qualification Plus. We give you a lot of parameters that you normally wouldn't see in a qualifier. You'd have to have a certifier to see these things. If we go into the details screen, we can look at things like network compliance and see that we're able to run up to 10 gig on this cable. We can look at DC resistance and see both the loop resistance and pair-to-pair -pair unbalance, which is important for power over Ethernet. We can also see things like insertion loss, we can see crosstalk plots, and if we go farther down the list, we have some tools for the technician that are TDR based tools, return loss locator and next locator. So we can look at next locator for instance and we can see where the, the crosstalk is along this particular piece of cable. So I'll go ahead and back out of the, the test here and I'm going to grab one of my other remote IDs and we'll plug that in. And we'll just move over to the link that corresponds to the other end of that. And we see now this is remote ID number 8. And just like with the first remote ID number 1, I can still run this Certilite test. So these are not just dumb remotes that only give you an ID number. This is what we call advanced link identification. So not only does it identify the link, but it allows you to run this TIA 1152A test. I'm going to go ahead and run the auto test. And in this case, we see that the auto test failed. We failed for return loss and crosstalk. Let's go look at the details. Let's just check out that nearing crosstalk locator again and see what we find. Here we see a large spike. And if I click on the spike, I can see how far out it is. It's 90 feet away. That's at the other end of this link. So I would want to look at where that remote terminator, that, that advanced link identifier number eight, is plugged in. There's probably an issue, and in this case I happen to know that the issue is that the pair is not twisted all the way up to the point of termination. There's probably about an inch and a half of untwist. So that's what's causing the crosstalk there. These are the kind of things that you get with Qualification Plus and the Certilite test that's found in the Network Service Assistant. So why would you want multiple remotes? that you could test to? Well, the multiple remotes will help you identify that wires maybe aren't that aren't labeled. You can figure out where they go. Maybe somebody mislabeled something prior to your arrival. You're testing a, a, a legacy system. Maybe somebody didn't label it at all and you need to figure out where it goes. So the remote identifiers allow you to plug into telecommunications outlets around the facility and then be back in the closet with your NSA and test and figure out which one you're connected to. Additionally, you know, this kit is available. The number one comes with the unit. You've got kit uh, that gives you two through eight. And then there's another version of the kit that adds on top of remotes two through eight, this Tempo 200 FP filter probe. So if you ever have to do tone and probe operation, and that's another part of identifying where these runs go, so maybe you want to use your tone and probe rather than, than ID numbers, we can go into expert tools and we can turn on the tone generator. And I'm just going to select tone number two. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and turn the probe on. And when I first turn it on, you can hear a buzz from AC voltage harmonics. So that's very common. Anybody that's done the tone and probe operation has, has seen this. Doesn't matter what kind of RF probe you're using, you're going to see this, this buzz. Sometimes you can still find that tone. 
and I can get to that jack. I can see, yeah, I'm getting tone there, but sometimes you may not be able to pick up that tone, and you want to get rid of that noise. First off, it's annoying. I'll hit the filter, and now I can get in there and find that tone much more readily. Now, additionally, you may notice there is a, a LED on here that's, that's blinking, and it, it gets close to solid as we get right on that, on that wire, we see that tone. It's, it, it lights up. It's a signal strength indicator. The signal strength indicator is useful for a couple of things. If you get in a, an environment, you've got a lot of equipment, a lot of noise in the background, and you can't really hear the tone, you can watch that light and see that light light up and you'll know you're on the tone. More importantly, anytime you're doing a tone and probe operation, there's always the chance of bleed over between ports on a panel or between cables in a bundle. What this LED will do is if you get, if you're hearing tone on multiple ports or in multiple cables in a bundle, what you'll want to do is you'll go back and forth between those and initially when you've got the gain turned up on the side, you're going to see that LED will light up most of the time. Turn that gain down a little bit at a time, keep going back and forth between those multiple tones that you're hearing in your ear, and at some point you'll get that gain turned down to just the right spot where only the wire that you're trying to find will cause that LED to light up. And that's how you determine that you're on that link. So this is the advanced link identification kit, including the 200 FP filter probe from Tempo Communications. Now, you've used this to find where these wires go because you, you had a problem and you needed to figure out where the wires are going, whether you did it with the link IDs or you did it with the, uh, the tone and probe operation. Hopefully now you'll go ahead and label everything so nobody down the road has to deal with this problem as well. And you might have your brother labeling tool to go ahead and do this. So you can also take the same labeling scheme that you're using in your NSA that you've created in a CSV file, import it into your NSA, but you can also import that into your brother labeling tool. So pretty cool feature there. Anyway, that is the Network Service Assistant Advanced Link Identification Kit. The Link ID Kit for the Network Service Assistant is available in a 60 Hertz version with the 60 Hertz filter probe from Tempo Communications, as well as a 50 Hertz version for many other parts of the world with a Tempo Communications 200 FP filter probe with a 50 Hertz filter. Additionally, remotes number two through eight only are available in a kit form should you not need a tone probe. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.